I have to say depressingly, and right, let me say this right here and now, I do not own Adobe shares, I'm not a marketing executive for Adobe, but the other day I did actually save a PowerPoint presentation. It was something like 370 megabytes in total. I'd use the save as PDF available as standard in PowerPoint and it reduced it from 370 to all of 210 megabytes. Wow. And it was a PDF and it viewed fine. I then put it through PDF Writer. PDF Writer, of course, was a paid for option, a pseudo printer driver. And it went from 370 megabytes to 10 megabytes, which I think says something about the willingness to call upon compression technologies and the expertise in preparing good PDFs. Let's just backtrack a little bit and remind ourselves of, yeah, famous launch of Postscript in early 1985, John Warnock, Steve Jobs, all that. And the example they used, we've got it here. Here was John Warnock's original Postscript, which when imaged and rendered, produced this supplementary income tax form. But it was too slow for Steve Jobs to show at the launch. We've done some stuff on this. If you unroll the loops, flatten the code, then you can get something that works in about 25 seconds. And that's what they did. Now, I know many of you will say, well, that's a good start, but it's not enough. What about this stuff you've gone out on in the past about lossy and lossless compression? Yes, obviously in PDF, many of you will know you can do lossless LZ or LZW type compression on text, fine, it's there, it's available. And yes, in images, you are certainly going to need to be able to do compression of the JPEG sort and to have it coped with by the postscript and indeed the PDF image operator. So compression is of the order of the day, over and beyond abbreviating things. If this is the glimmerings of PDF, why did it take so long for PDF to actually emerge? Well, what, how long, what, what are we talking here? How long? We're talking from 1985 when this was done and the actual announcement of PDF and Acrobat, its viewer software, was late 92, early 93. So we're looking at seven years, aren't we? There. More like eight, probably, by the time you're finished. Why did it take so long? And the answer is simple. You had to wait for people's desktop workstations to become powerful enough to handle all this. The common factor between the two is what's called the postscript graphic model, which is magic. But remember, back in 85, the only computer in the room powerful enough to render postscript was the laser writer. The Macs were utterly incapable of doing it. A standard nine inch Mac came with 128K, just hopeless. And they were so slow as well, even slower than laser printer. So there we are then, you realize that if Postscript was gonna develop away from being just something that ended up being printed out on paper into being something renderable on a big screen, well, for a start, your screen's got to be capable of holding, US, of rendering US letter size or A4 size pages, okay? Relate that back to a tiny nine inch Mac screen. And the answer is, well, you'll have to wait for that technology to develop and you'll have to be prepared to pay a fortune for your Apollo or Sun workstations for the 70 people in your print room or whatever it is to use. But gradually, slowly but surely, it did come along. And um, of course, by 1990, there was no question Postscript had won the high-end war completely and totally. So what was their recommended means if you were a Postscript devotee to get across to PDF as a first approximation? And for the sake of argument, we'll say maybe it was Microsoft Word or something like that here. And up until now, if you want high quality output, let's use ellipses for stuff that's in printable formats. So we'll say PS here. Yes, you could get Word to produce Postscript. You could send that Postscript off, Apple Laser Writer or some other Laser Writer that actually had got Postscript inside it. Adobe were making a fair bit of nice money, thank you very much, supplying proper postscript to go into laser writers right through to laser setters at the very high end. The new feature now coming along was to say, well, if you put 
this postscript into another piece of Adobe software called Distiller. This will turn it into this new and wonderful PDF. Now, you've got to give people a means of viewing it for free. The famous Acrobat, but you have to pay if you want Distiller. So the next question then was, yes, I'm a loyal Postscript person, but that distill is costing a fortune, Adobe. I'm going to find somebody else who can do it for me. And of course, there were lots and lots of people who would do your distiller substitute. It is not easy. You have got to be able to take the most outrageously abominable Postscript and not crash. And I, I remember saying to Adobe person at the time, I said, well, what's wrong with a lot of these clones? He said, they get everything right, but the thing they can't handle is fonts. <laughs> and I said, what? He said, well, first of all, you know, you've know, you got to license them. We've got permission from uh, Linotype to use their stuff, but you've got to use clone fonts, and then you're in trouble. Do they quite match what was there on the original and what the intention was? And Indeed, fonts has always been a problem in this. I once asked Bob Wolf, the leader of the team that developed PDF Distiller and Acrobat Reader, and said, Bob, what were your six greatest challenges in developing PDF? And he said, Dave, that's easy. Fonts, 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 fonts and fonts, in that order. Those were my six biggest challenges. <laughs> so anyway, the obvious question to ask, since this is going to cost you a lot of money, is to say, well, look, Word needs to get into this PDF form now, doesn't it, to go, you know, uh, be compliant. Why not take a flying leap around here, cut out the middleman, as it were? You don't need to go through Postscript anymore. Word or any other app could use a printer driver, a standard printer driver type thing, except it's not really directly driving a printer, it's producing a PDF file. Well, they did in very short order. They came out with PDF Writer. And again, opportunity for third parties. Um, PDF Writer, of course, was a paid for option to get this PDF. It was not free, like Reader. So a lot of people said, we can do a PDF writer that's good enough, and some were better than others, inevitably. So to sum up then, this is the nature of the PDF story. It took a long time to get itself established, but now it really is a de facto standard, uh, and a very, very successful one too. The only big conundrum still left um, and, you know, for those of us, those of you who've seen my HTML video, I can only come back to this, that <sighs> Tim Berners-Lee's comment to me about we've got to find some way to marry exact representation and high quality typography with the flexibility to reflow stuff. And we're still, in a way, poles apart. I mean, HTML, despite CSS, cannot really aspire to the same standards of typographic excellence as a PDF can. And yet, PDF is exact but rigid. Sometimes people try and attempt to reflow PDF, and it's rarely successful, and it's certainly not easy. So I think John Warnock's comment, I just wish you would do something about marrying these two views of the world, is, yeah, one of the advantages of PDF and Postscript is you can say, draw me on my screen a line that is exactly one inch long. And it doesn't matter whether it's a 72 DPI screen or whether it's a piece of bromide imaged at 2,000 dots per inch. That same command in either Postscript or PDF, draw me a line one inch long, regardless of the resolution, get your rule around, it will be one inch long. HTML can't do that. Every time you go in that loop, it has to say, what's my loop counter at the moment? Oh, I'm on three. Now, let me take a look at how far I'm supposed to. Oh, six is. Oh, is three less than six? Yes, it is. Oh, I think we'd better go around again. I exaggerate.